So I'm back again with another video. Uh, yeah, if you have not subscribed, please do so to get us to 1000. We want to be able to record live from our cell phone. Thank you. Okay, Whew. this topic, I'm going to be quick as I like to be because I recognize these videos can't uh, at times hold everyone's attention. Destruction and devastation. Let's see. For those of you out there who are watching this video, all of you smart, highly intelligent PhDs and MDs and Esquires, folks with all these fancy titles and who are all knowing. I want you to tell me a time in recorded history, recorded, that when the 2520s came from out of their caves, they did not wreak havoc and devastation on any country where the populace was all melanated. Let me repeat that. Please name for me a time in recorded history since the 2520s came out of their caves and they did not wreak havoc on any country that is populated by melanated people basically on planet Earth. Now I'm gonna wait a few seconds since I'm gonna be watching the premiere to see what I garner. I'm back. You may wonder why I'm asking this question. Of course it's for good measure. Because there seems to be some confusion about people not knowing from whence they come in, or just history in general. I am not a person that sits up and quotes dates and times and all of this stuff. That's not what I do, but I am well read. I don't argue uh, back and forth with folks about whatever fact I know I'll let you all do that for me but one thing I am going to tell you about is this Colon colonization happened across the globe planet earth during this colonization all types of devastation was left in terms of a path. Vis-a-vis -vis women being slaughtered and raped or slaughtered because they didn't want to bow in to their oppressor, so they were killed. Or they may have even been uh, raped, taken advantage of, and then killed afterwards for not giving in. The same with men, okay? The same with men. Children, the same. As these countries began to go across the globe and be nomadic for whatever their reasons was, Maybe they were leaving war in their own homelands 
and venturing out just to see what else was out there, etc. Make no mistake, anyone that did not look like them or favor them, at some point they became an issue. At some point. What you also may not realize is that black people, since that's the construct that we use, okay, aided a lot of different regimes in war. Be it blacks helping Arabs. Um, the West, so that they can win some of these wars when they didn't have the manpower. And at the end of the day, we were still treated like slaves. Yeah. We get you out of a sticky situation and you treat us like nothing. So since there is no time in recorded history that lands of people populated that look like me were not colonized, I ask you another question. If all of these lands and countries were colonized by folks who didn't look like us, when they left those countries, tell me what they left behind. Was it a pretty sight? Did they leave industrialization behind? Did they leave um, large businesses behind? Did they leave state-of-the-art hospital facilities? Did they leave high-functioning rail railways? I'm talking about the time before this new social media technology, et cetera, et cetera. Did they leave behind the best engineers money could buy? The best architects, the best, the best educators, the best scientists in every facet of life, the best archaeologists, the best sociologists. I, I, I'm, as you can see, I'm going here. My wheels are spinning. I'm asking for the collected because the people want to know. The people want to know if they left behind the good stock that some of the people in the West contend that they currently have. And what they do is talk about continental Africa as if she is the bastard child. It's time to have a dialogue. And here we go. For those of you in the West, what I want you to tell me is, what are you going to do when you can't get food? Let's talk about the United States. The U.S. has been talking down on Mexico for years. But just like any animal, Self-preservation comes first. So with the current situation that we have going on right now, there's going to come a point where trade lines for food are going to become very minimal. And you folks in the United States do not have farms. And especially farms that can grow So my question again is, what are you going to do? See, it's easy to sit back and say, wow, a place is not this, a place is not that, and this is not for you, etc." That's very easy. But what no man is going to tell you is, what are they going to do when they cannot go out to the store to feed their family basic sustenance. Remember, the bulk of things come from Alcabulon. 
so sure you can say there's people there starving and they don't have this infrastructure and they don't have that. But I ask you again, the previous question, what did the colonizers leave behind for them to be successful? Look at Haiti. Look what France did to Haiti because they won their independence through war. They beat them at their own game. And since France basically called them to say, hey, all of these Frenchmen lost money because of this uprising, basically their slave labor, that's what the money was. Their assets were slave labor. You owe us billions of dollars because they took the slave owner's books and let them decide how much each of these slaves were worth. And when they calculated it up, France said, this is a debt that you gotta pay. And if you don't pay it, we're gonna bring in these warships and we're gonna put this heat on you. We're gonna put this heat on you. And you all sit right back over there in your plushness. And you wonder why Haiti is in the predicament she is in now because she has been paying on a debt for winning her own freedom. But you are not talking about that. You're not talking about that. But you will bash Haiti because of the lack of infrastructure. Well, how can they build up infrastructure if they have been left, I think it was a hundred, was it a hundred and twenty billion dollar debt? Which means everything that they generate, they have to send it out to make and pay down this debt. No one wants to have this conversation with me. Oh, I'm sure. That is in the West and speaking about al -Kebulon. I mean, I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. The truth of the matter is, is that, yes, I am a United States citizen, but I'm also clear-minded. I'm clear-minded enough to know this, that without my ancestors, the United States would not be where she is. I've always said in previous videos, imagine a country that gets four to 500 years of free labor. And this labor force, where you can basically work people to death. You can have breeding farms to continue to make your workforce more bountiful and plentiful. Because there's no laws against it. What do you think we would be? I, I, I don't understand why no one understands that. But do not relegate us to, at the same time, within this short period of life, age, to only that. Because our ancestors go back more than 30,000 years. Yes. Our history is vast and beautiful. But we need to understand devastation and destruction and where we as a collective get that from. The best liars, cheats, thieves, manipulators, um, extortionists, um, espionagers, spies, terrorists, all of this stuff that, that we consider to be criminal, we learn to perfect that Do guess who? 2520s. Because that's what they've been promulgating across the world. And then you all sit and denigrate other places. Again, I don't purport that there's a utopia on planet Earth. I don't purport that. But real recognize real. I recognize that there is a 
machine in place that is continuing to keep us at bay, never wanting us to unify with continental Africans because of what we can be. And I may not see this in my lifetime, but what I can say is during my lifetime, I've done my part. <laughs>